Ooh, good job. This, ready? I'm ready, man. What do we got? Yes, baby Orinoco crocodiles, no way. And the most exciting thing of all is that we're actually planning on sending these back to Venezuela for repatriation. Yeah, so that is, that's a mind blower, guys. No way, no way. I get the whole one. Oh my God, this is amazing, man. Oh, friends, we are in for a treat today. I'm hanging out here to Miami. Ah! There is a good mom. She's being a good mother. Yeah, We're hanging out with Ashley Lawrence, Cindy. There you go. And good old Ryan Zach. And I'm actually down here picking up some more Orlidia and other Anamensis. So I'm picking up some turtles, but we got to go ahead to show you guys a little behind the scenes. And I figured one of the more exciting things to see would be the Orinoco crocodiles. And you guys are doing a lot of great work with this incredibly threatened species. Actually the most endangered species in the new world. All right, so Ash, you've got a lot of um, a lot of experience with these guys. Talk to me about what we're going to be doing here today. What, what are we going to be seeing? Well, Bella is still uh, participating in some training um, with us uh, trainers. The thing is, though, she is feeling her her motherly instincts uh, pretty deeply right now. This is a, the season that she feels she knows her eggs are going to be hatching. So okay. Most of the stuff we've been doing with her lately has been really easy, kind of relaxed training sessions. We're just asking her to come over, eat off the tongs gently, just kind of maintaining some of those behaviors. It's really hard to ask her to move away from what she believes is her nest where her eggs were laid. Okay. So for us, we just want to make sure we stay within her comfort zone and still get her to will willing to be a willing participant during training. All right, well, very cool. So this is a really cool scene, folks. We're going to see how the professionals do it here at Zoo Miami, working with potentially lethal animal. I mean, again, this animal's not trying to not trying to eat Ashley. Yeah. She's basically protecting a nest that's over there, and we're gonna see, perhaps later, the fruits of your labor and her labor. To be honest, yeah. I know you're I know you're excited. <laughs> All right, so let's do it. Let's see what All she'll right. do. I love how uh, protective they are. You know, you don't think of reptiles as good moms, but you guys know at home if you've been following the channel and doing your own research about reptiles, they are actually some of the best moms in the animal kingdom, and there are even some turtles that are actually protecting their nest as well. Minorio are brown and black mountain tortoises. And then they've even done some work on the uh, Podocnemis expansa and they found that they're vocalizing to some of the young uh, young babies that are coming in off of the uh, good old uh, beaches. Yeah. Which is also interesting because this is in our Amazon exhibit. So yeah. nice segue, I think. I don't know if I say so myself. <laughs> Let's do it, I don't want to hold you up. I'm gonna call her over to the other side and okay. see if she'll walk up on land. So this is really cool, man. And you may recognize Ashley from uh, all kinds of interesting things. Yeah. I think you were on Animal Planet I've a little bit. A You've done a few time. things, yeah. So it's pretty cool to see you out here working at Zoo Miami and continuing your career with animals, man. That's awesome. Living the dream. There that you go. The truth. It's awesome, man. So many of you guys ask me, how can I get involved in animals? Well, Ashley's been doing it since she's probably, uh, God, since you're a kid. Yeah, honestly, the, the best advice I can say is do it every day. But Just you got keep it. doing it every day. Good deal. Bella! Bella! Now being a new mom, she's always very aware. She recognizes us. She knows who we are. So anytime new people are around, she's rightfully very wary. That makes sense. And the cool thing, guys, is these animals actually do know their names. Now, is it important to make sure she's still eating while she's protecting the nest? I mean, I would imagine this is somewhat of a stressful time. She doesn't really leave to hunt in the wild, would yeah, she? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we want to make sure she's eating just so she maintains that healthy weight. Good girl. Now, did you just blow a whistle? Oh yeah, these guys are uh, are whistle trained. That's called a bridge. Get out of here. Yeah. So, that's amazing. All right, Bella, good girl. Let's see if we can get up. A little closer here. All right. Now I know. Oh, beautiful. Yes, girl. Yes. Good girl. Now I notice you got like a blue end to that stick. Is that part of the training? Absolutely. So she lives with her partner, who I'll introduce you to in a little bit. She's eating some quail today, one of her favorites. Oh, um, and so these guys um, can see color really well. This blue is her target, so she knows that this is the color we want her to come to. Okay. When she first got here, um, she saw these poles as, you know, 
something she needed to grab, chew on, and throw away. So now she's realizing she comes up to it, she's calm, then we bridge her. As soon as she hears that whistle, she knows, okay, I did the right thing, my food's coming. So bridging is a term for what? So bridging is just a way, it's kind of the same way people use clickers for, for training okay. dogs. It just means the food is on its way. Okay. You did the right thing. It allows you to mark an exact moment in time so that it makes it easier for you to communicate to um, any type of animal, frogs, lizards, crocodiles, dogs. Wow what you want them to do. Okay. Because, you know, sometimes it's hard to get that food right into their mouth quickly. That's amazing. So she's waiting patiently. You can see she understands that she's just kind of waiting here. She's, she, this is what we call at station. So she's just here engaging with us, choosing to be patient and calm, which is really a testament to her intelligence. I mean, we're right next to where she laid her eggs. So normally, if, if we weren't engaging in a training session, she'd be extremely protective. She would be uh, showing you the veracity of that maternal crocodile motherhood attitude. But yeah. because she understands what we're doing, we're here to feed her, we're here to work gently with her. She is totally comfortable and willing to sit quietly and just be. Yeah. As long as your behavior is yeah. consistent. If you tried to do yeah. something that was out of the normal, Absolutely. she'd respond she'd in kind. Absolutely. Yeah. This is great, guys. Look at how Isn't close we incredible? are. She's beautiful. Orinoco crocodiles. Now I have to be careful, guys. I don't want to get too close and cause her to do anything that would be against her training. Um, but I'm really excited that we have this kind of level of access uh, from the good people here at Zoo Miami because this is a wealth of information, Ashley. I know my viewers appreciate uh, learning so much about how you can train these animals. So why don't we go ahead and continue to do what you gotta do. Okay. I mean, we're gonna feed her some more. Is yep, she only I've got gonna... a fish for her next. That's oh, her cool. favorite. So is it tilapia? What is that? She's got a big blue tilapia. Oh. Here at the zoo, oh my gosh, they're so lucky. Yes. They have an entire nutrition center that are preparing these diets for them. Um, so it's really nice for us because they get such a wide variety of full prey items. That's awesome. Look at that beauty. Look right at her go back. right back in. Orinoco mm -hmm. crocodile, guys. From the Orinoco River in Venezuela and in parts of Colombia one of the most endangered species of crocs in the world. And uh, we're not done yet, because we're gonna feed her again, and we're also gonna meet Cindy, who we met actually earlier, and she's gonna show us some of the babies they've been able to hatch. But we also are gonna see a male. Oh yeah. I wanna meet, see everything. We're gonna meet her handsome blip Oh uh, hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's All right. go ahead and bring her to the other side for her fish. So why do, you do, why do you do it in two sides? Is it for exercise? Is it just to change up the routine? It's important to challenge her to understand that, you know, we're gonna, you know, ask her to go places to okay. move around the enclosure. The biggest challenge so far has actually been getting her to move away from where her nest is. Okay. Because her instincts are telling her, stay close, stay nearby. So being able to do this over and over allows her to build up the confidence it's okay to follow us around. She's going to be all right. Awesome. Bella! And where do you go through this mm -hmm. hole? All right, I'll see yeah, if I can. can I'm going to, like yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just really try and get in there. You could actually put that in over. Bella! Over here, baby. Go ahead, right over. I don't mind fish juice. <laughs> Oof, good, good job. These guys have such sensitive jaws too. All along the edges of their jaw, those little black freckles mm -hmm. are integumentary sensory organs. So she's got like hyper touch. So when I put that fish through there, I know when she's more calm and, and, and engaged in this training session because she'll very gently take the fish off the tongs. That's cool. But when she's really fired up and she's more in defensive mode, I know she can tell the difference between the tongs and the fish. So if she grabs a hold of the tongs and she's giving it a couple chomps, it's because she's trying to let me know, I'm not feeling it today, I'm a little fired up. So okay. being aware of the behavior makes it a lot easier to take care of them and kind of know where they're at mentally that day. Cause you know, we don't always have the best days. Of days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, that's one of the things, you know, when people ask me, you know, how do you know so much about your animals? Yeah. And I'm going to steal a line that, uh, that I got from a guy named Tom Crutchfield. I'm sure you know. Yeah. It's like you just gotta shut up, sit, and watch your animals. Yes. Just watch them. They'll teach you everything they need yeah. you to know. Uh, just if you're patient and quiet, yeah. and you see that, like you said, exactly. that body language. Because yeah. reptiles obviously don't really communicate the way yeah. we do. They don't move their faces. Yeah. They don't show us things except for these non-verbal. If you marry things. that information of just watching that individual's behavior with the knowledge of their natural history, yeah. and kind of understand, well, what would they do in the wild? Why would they be exhibiting that behavior? How does that serve them? 
if they were a wild animal. And being able to put those things together, you'd be amazed how much stuff, you have those aha moments. Yes, you unlock all these mysteries. Yeah. And that's the fun thing about being involved with animals, is they're always showing us something new. All right, is she getting more food or is that it for her? She's it, that's it for her, but all right. sitting here at station. She's such a smart girl. Well, you did a great job there, Bella. I appreciate it. Oh boy, Bella. Bella. Oh, Bella, even behind the chain link, you scared the crap out of me. She's like, listen here, Kenan. Yo, oh, man, <laughs> let's go meet her boyfriend. Yeah. You got it. All right, so we are trudging through the jungle here at Zoo Miami to go to the croc that is on exhibit. What's his name again? His name is One. His name's One? Yep. Get out of here. The One, like the Neo? One. Cool. The Going one. Matrix on it. Oh, yeah. Cindy's joining us. She's got some croc biscuits. Uh, always a treat. So we're going to just follow the instructions from uh, Ashley here. But you guys see we are behind the scenes. I love being behind the scenes at zoos, just seeing how things are made. Look at this, guys. They have this angled in, looks like stone. I wish I actually had uh, the ability to do this for some of my lizards, because this is cool, man. So I the, like this stuff. The back of house where we saw where Bella was okay. is um, obviously our, our back area. It gives her the privacy that uh, she needs when she's nesting. She's obviously very protective. Yeah. This guy, however, he loves attention from oh. people. He's got a huge glass window, so whenever we have guests come over, I mean, even if we're in the middle of training, this guy will break away and go look at the people. Get out of here. He really loves the interaction. He is <laughs> such a ham. Uh, so we're gonna do a quick training session with okay. him. Mostly for fun. This guy is, uh, he likes a good he likes a good food puzzle, if you know what I mean. All so right. We'll ask him to do some targets. He's, he's super good about it. Um, and then we'll uh, see if we can get that camera a little close and get some right, nice good. shots of his teeth Thank for you. you. So feel free to-, to can, I, can I lean yeah, on you this? Can get close. Right. Just the, the, the rule is do not fall in, yeah. Cannon. There we go. Oh, there he is. Holy smokes, he's yeah. gorgeous. He is all boy, isn't he? My so goodness. The idea here is to have him touch the pole gently with his snout. That's the training. Yeah, so we're asking him to target, to touch. And this is really helpful because if we go in on the exhibit with him, we want him to come up to the pool side and, and we're trying to tell him this is your spot. This is where you want, uh, where we want you to be. He'll come up, he'll place his snout against the pole and then he'll hold that position. Could he jump out of the water and chase us? Yeah, but the point is he has confidence in us. He knows what we're gonna do. And so this way it allows us to, to work around him and to work closely with him where he understands we're not gonna go in there and, and grab him or do any of those things. It's it's much easier communication, which gives him confidence, which makes him calm. One, target. No way. That is amazing. You wouldn't think that you could train these animals and that's the biggest misconception. Oh. He's incredibly he is gorgeous. Look at the size of his head. Guys, we are looking at just an amazing species of crocodile. This uh, is just a, one of the most beautiful in my opinion. And if you notice the shape of that snout, that's gonna show you exactly what these guys eat. Most of the time, these are fish eaters and smaller animals they're eating. They're not like a Nile croc or a saltwater croc that specializes in bigger prey. These guys are more specialized for smaller prey. And you can tell, look at how narrow those jaws are. Oh, where are we going? Oh, there's some quail. Good job. Hey, Ash, pretty good job with the uh, release. Yeah, I like it. That was nice. My tongue skills, I am pretty proud of. I hear you, man. <laughs> you must be good with chopsticks. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go over here. Let's try and okay. get a little bit of the top. All right, let's do it. Are you guys having fun, man? This is awesome. I love it, man. I feel a little spoiled. <laughs> here we go. This is our crocodile catwalk. We got a maneuver behind this exhibit okay but this is one of my favorite exhibits um it really let people love to sit in the bubble and, and yeah. take a look so what i'm gonna have you do kevin is i'm gonna have you sit right here okay and i'm gonna get right behind you all right you got it and then we'll kind of look down the gaping maw and see what we can do there he is oh god guys this is beautiful he's he is definitely amped up so he knows this he knows this routine. He is a good boy. He is so aware of what's going on. One. One. Woo! <laughs> oh, we missed it. That's all right. 
Oh my gosh. So he does like to chase his food around. Okay. Even though he missed the fish right now, you're gonna see him sweeping his head underwater. He's looking for it right now. Well, this adds to the enrichment. Yeah. But man, that was awesome anyway, just to be that, you know, to have you guys see that perspective of him. Let's see if he pops back up. Cindy's got uh, the dessert here. Ah, <laughs> little, little Missouri dessert perhaps? It's it doesn't seem like it would be, but this is one of his favorite things. Here he's got the fish. And once oh. he eats this, you'll see him probably... Oh wait, hold on, Sen. He's eating the fish. He got it. He got it. Yeah, I know people like a nice ending to a story. <laughs> they would be they would be like commenting, did he get the fish? Yeah, he did. He got the fish. There he is. He never, ever misses a fish. No, he doesn't look like he misses a meal. He looks pretty darn healthy. All right, Cindy, talk to me. I didn't mean to cut you off, but when action's no, happening, you're good. you know. you got to catch it when it's happening. That's right. All right, what do we got here? We got some crock biscuits? Yep, so this is just a little bit of a supplement for anybody that doesn't know. It's it's a complete feed, and it doesn't seem like much. This is like your morning breakfast cereal. But um, if you'll pop back up here, I'll go ahead and toss him one. And he just loves motoring around looking for him. He'll wiggle his tail, like how it can sneak up to it, like, ooh, I'm going to get it. <laughs> and he'll, like, come right alongside it. Ah, got it. That's here he awesome. Comes. All right, let's see. Right in that corner. Oh, here we go, yes. So how how stoked are you on your job, Cindy, that you get to kind of hang out with these large primitive reptiles? Oh my gosh, it's incredible. I I ever since I was a kid, it was this running joke. Um, I actually used to be a horse person for a long time, but I was always looking for the reptiles, always looking for the anoles, and um, I always wanted to have an iguana and everyone would be like, oh, you're going to be an iguana farmer when you grow up. And I came pretty close. So <laughs> that's it's, awesome. It's incredible and really excited to get to show you guys. All right. Well, there you have it. We met mom and pop. I think now it's time to uh, go see what's really been happening and why zoos are such an important part of conservation here in the United States and elsewhere on the planet, making sure that these animals, their bloodlines, and their offspring are going to be reproduced for generation to come. Uh, quick shout out to our intern pal over here. What's your name? Tell everyone. Vicky. Vicky is, uh, yes. they're singing her praises because she's been keeping detailed records of the little children we're about to see right now. And I'm going to start talking louder because as you guys see, we are behind the scenes. Massive filtration here. Cindy and Ashley are giddy because they love working with these little maniacs here. So Are you this, ready? I'm ready, man. All right. I, I'm, I'm all gloved up. Giant what do we got? Under here. Yes, baby Orinoco crocodiles. No way. This is amazing, guys. So the story with these guys, I mean, this is a massive success story for conservation. And, you know, for the story of conservation here in the United States with these animals in AZA accredited facilities, talk to me about this is them. Huge. This is huge. So there's only two other institutions that have been breeding these, uh, Dallas World Aquarium and Gladys Porter. Um, so our male, number one, um, is actually, he was produced by Dallas World Aquarium. And then uh, we actually did produce Orinocos in 1980. The only living survivor is Bella. And so now we have been very lucky to get these guys together. And these are the first babies for Zoo Miami since 1980. And they are completely genetically unrelated. And the most exciting thing of all is that we're actually planning on sending these back to Venezuela for repatriation. Yeah, so that is, that's a mind blower, guys. So many times conservation is about just keeping the species alive in an ark, okay? In a captive facility. This is conservation in action. These animals are gonna go back to the country of origin for the species. I can't say how incredible an achievement that is. And you guys, obviously, they're so proud. It's really cool to see keepers. Rob, Ryan, no way, no way. I get to hold one? Oh my God, this is amazing, man. I, I just love the fact that everyone here is so passionate about what they're doing. And that's what's important. I'm gonna hold on to this little guy because this is like, oh my God, face to face. This is about the only size that I wanna come face to face with like this. But this little dude has got all the temperament that he needs to survive in the wild. But again, I got sidetracked since, since Ryan uh, thrust one of these beauties in my hand. But 
to see you guys so excited and so proud of your achievement really is uh it means the world to me and i know everyone out there watching is going to be really psyched that you guys are on hand doing such a great job down here at zoo miami so what i think we should do folks is in the comments why don't you thank cindy and ashley and ryan and vicky back there hiding out our interns are very important thank them for the hard work they're doing here they really love these animals and if you're visiting florida Please stop by Zoo Miami, and if you see the ladies, or Ryan, there's his face, that's Ryan. If you see these guys, tell them you saw Camp Cannon's video and you appreciate them. I just want to say, did you get bit? That's great, you even got bit. Occupational hazard, good job, little dude. All right, man, so there you go. A bucket list animal for me to put hands on. Thank you, girls, so much for your time today. This is awesome. Let's go ahead and put these little dudes back. All right, we'll see you guys later. Score one for the Orinoco Crocodile. End conservation. <laughs>